So after a short train ride and a bus ride, we're here at the Wolf Slayer. We're about to go in. It's a cool, cloudy day. I think it's the perfect atmosphere to go explore the Wolf Slayer. So we just paid. We're entering, I guess, the layer right now. The first thing you notice is these train tracks right when you enter. You're crossing over some sort of old transportation route. All right, so after passing the railroad tracks, you're gonna come in and see a bunch of cafes and the meeting points where you're gonna meet your guide if you have one. But there's also some informational signs. You get a layout of the whole uh, Wolf's Lair. Yep, and from there, you can see where you actually can pick up these little great information books. So you don't even have to technically get a guide if for whatever reason you can't arrange one. So we're officially starting the tour right now. Off to my right here, you have a little light bunker as it's referred to, but most impressive is just the entrance with this carved sign and wooden wolf like statue. Mm -hmm. It really sets the tone for, a, uh, I think, what is going to be a very cool tour. So let's go. We're at checkpoint three now. There are 29 checkpoints throughout the layer here. And this one is really interesting because this is actually from the scene from Valkyrie. This is like what Valkyrie was all about. This is where the assassination attempt on Hitler was done by Colonel Stauffenberg. So Audrey, what do you think about this site? It's just amazing to think that we're standing here in the footsteps of this amazing time in history. Um, I don't know, there's just an air to this place. So we're gonna dig deeper. So you may get the idea, like me, that you can just sort of roam around the area, maybe discover some new bunkers yourself, but there's a lot of warning signs that there are possibly still some mines that haven't um, been, I guess, noticed. Deactivated, deactivated or found or, yet, or, yeah. yes. So no unfortunately, self. there's no true self-exploration that you can do on your own here. Uh, but right now we're approaching six, which looks way impressive. So this is the guest bunker number six here behind me and the reason it looks so impressive is because it was the guest bunker and for a couple months in 1944 it was also Hitler's personal bunker while his was being renovated. So one of the benefits of exploring on your own is that you could kind of take the time to really um, spend time at each bunker. So Harry's gonna slide his camera in there and you can see how thick these walls actually are of this particular bunker. He's estimating it's around 10 feet. So we're at checkpoint number 11 now. This is Martin Borman's bunker, personal bunker here. And you can see the doorway, the entrance. The neat thing about this is that they had over 30 foot concrete from the top of the doorway all the way to the roof. So heavily bunkered for this guy. You could tell this is one of Hitler's best comrades. Yep. This is ridiculously secure. <laughs> I wonder what these look like inside. I wish I could like an image of what it like, a living space looks like. We've reached the number 13 checkpoint here, and it's Hitler's bunker. It's the largest building here at the complex. And he actually lived here from October 1st, 1944 to November 20th, 1944.
So as you're leaving Hitler's main bunker, right next to it is Hitler's residence bunker. So that's where he spent, you know, most of his time. Right behind me to my right here. Right above me is the roof to Hitler's residence bunker. And now we're actually walking through the ruins of his residence bunker. Really kind of crazy to think about what we're doing right now. Audrey, what do you think? Is this insane or what? You're retracing the steps of Adolf Hitler. You sure are. And it's amazing that you kind of get to wander around like this, isn't it? Yeah, you do have some freedom to kind of navigate through the ruins at your leisure. Look in here. We made it to number 16, Goering's Bunker right behind me. Let's go check it out. It looks like you can walk right through. So we just made it past Goering's bunker and beside me you could see his residence was actually still in very, very good condition. So a really nice um, view of his private residence here in the lair. Number 18 is the old officer's casino. So you can actually walk right through it as you can see behind me. So let's take a little stroll. So our tour around the Wolf Slayer has come to an end here. We're kind of departing right where it basically started near the guest bunker here. Um, we're running a little short on time because we have to go catch a train. We've been here about two and a half hours. I wish we had maybe another two hours to go because there is a whole other section um, that we're gonna miss out on. And it's kind of a big section, um, the blue route. So I would plan on, if you know, if you're really into history, really like want to spend a lot of time here, probably plan on four, four hours, like probably, conservatively. What do you think, Audrey? Yes, and for those of you that may not be able ever to make it here, at least you could get an idea of what everything looks like. And for those that are planning on visiting like us, um, this will give you a nice overview of what, what to expect. Please click the big red button to subscribe. One click goes a very long way.